So I thought I'd make a video on prolonging the life of your cedar shake roof. This roof has been up here since around 1981. And you can see how I've put slipped these shingles underneath. And this roof, I just cleaned the pine needles out from between the cracks, which I will show you how I did that in a few minutes. And I slipped shingles under. And you can see over there, that's a roof that needs to be cleaned. And I found that if I pull the needles out from between the shakes, at least every two years, it works pretty good because you wait any longer than two years, then the needles start to rot and they st and they'll start to rot the wood too. So if you can get them out every other year at least, and I'll take you around the other side and show you how I do it. There's a rough badly needing to be cleaned and you can see the light colored shingles are the ones that I'd slipped under. The tool I use is pretty simple. It's just a piece of quarter inch brass or five sixteenths brass that's been shaped and put on the end of a lightweight stick. The stick is at least eight feet long but I make put extensions on I take them off and on according to how I'm using it. But basically what I do is I just, I start at the top and work my way down. I put this between the shingles and I pull the debris out. And then once it's out, I can turn it sideways and pull it across. But I start at the top up here and it's kind of hard doing this, holding this camera. And uh, I pull all the debris out, all these cracks. So actually it goes pretty fast once you get the rhythm going. And then as the debris builds up, I just turn the thing sideways and pull it down. By the time I get to the bottom, I've got 90% of all the crap out of there. And the big advantage with using this over pressure washing, pressure washing, you need special gear to climb around up there so you don't slip and fall. And you can't tell what's going on with the shingles when you're pressure washing. With this, when I put this between the shakes and pull, I can feel if the shake is rotted, because it'll dig right into the shake, and if the shake's really bad, it'll drop right through, like, you know, there's a hole in it. And if I find a bad spot, then I can put a, I lay a shingle flat on this, and I just kind of carefully work it up here and set it down, then I use the end of it to push the shingle underneath like this one right here. I just turn it like that. And use the blunt end and I push it in there. Anyway, this is a very primitive way to do it, but I've been doing it for years and this roof, like I say, 1981 is when it was put in. And I have the roof to my house that was put up in 79, which I also take care of. So that's, that's almost 40 years. And I plan on getting at least 10 more years out of these things. And the thing also to keep in mind is the ones that rot first are the ones that get the most water, which are the bottom ones. The ones underneath right here, you can see the ends of them start to get kind of punky. But in order to fix that, is all you gotta do is put a shingle right here over this crack, just slip it up underneath there. It doesn't even have to be a full 24 inches long because on this one where the seam is here you know it's solid wood here so it only has to be the distance from here up to here which is only about 18 inches but you can probably put a full 24 in there if you wanted to you can actually put a shorter one in there because all you want to do is cover this and if it falls underneath the seam here it shouldn't do that because you shouldn't have a seam here directly under another seam anyway. If you had a seam here and a seam here, then you're looking for trouble and you should put a shingle over it. A lot of times these shakes will split with age and if the split's right here, you want to cover that with a new shingle. Just slip it underneath there and force it under. And when you're doing that, use the shingles that have the thinnest small end so it'll slip under easily. And these have tar paper underneath here too, so you got to get under the tar paper Anyway, that's my method of uh, cleaning roofs.
I do this every two years at least. You can see this roof over here. It's pretty messy too. And this one I'm gonna I'm gonna get a long extension ladder that I can lay flat on the roof. It'll extend all the way out down into the ground back there. So I can climb up and get up behind those tops of those skylights and clean out the debris up there. Yeah, I think I'll do a quick little run through on how the shingles go on a roof. Just lay a few down here. This is your first course. And this would usually be the th thinner shingles, especially on this end. You want the thinnest ones for the first course. And then the next one, you want to have like an inch and a quarter to inch and a half. Of course, this is ideal, but it never works that way. So I leave myself enough here for the next one there. Then you find a shingle, they'll fit. That one's a little too small. Grab a little bit bigger one. So now, if water runs down this, it runs onto this shingle and comes out. So your next course has to cover that one. So when the water runs down this shingle, it drips onto this one and runs down, and then it drips down to the bottom one. So this is the one that fills up with all the debris. So that's your last protection before you get a leaky roof. So that's why I pull the debris out. Now, if this does rot in here, then I can take a short shingle like this one and slip it underneath that one. Usually these, there's enough tension, you just slip it under, you don't need to nail it. But if you want to put a nail in, just put a, a nail in and maybe one nail or two at the most to hold it there. Just kind of continue on here. These shingles I have here are hand split. Well, you see the big gap here, and the big gap is all right, but it makes it harder for the next one to cover. You got to get a wider shingle, and so it'd be better to get it closer here. And you know, there's the argument you can make, just put them super close and the pine needles won't get in there. Well, they will get in there. And then it's harder to get your tool in there to drag them out. So I prefer to have about that much gap. So I gotta find a wider shingle, I'll go here. When you're working up on the roof, you just take, your hammer has a little hatchet on the one back side and you just whack it to fit. That one's, that one's marginal. It would work. And the next course would go up there. And usually this is nine inches on most roughs. Some people go ten, but the way it works is you got a 24 inch long shingle. So you got nine and nine is eight is eighteen. So that leaves you six inches of protection up here is the idea. But if you went 10 and 10, then you only have four inches of protection up here. And the reason that's kind of, you gotta be concerned about that is because look how thin the shingle is. Here about four inches, it's only that thick. You drop down here, it's a little thicker. So I think nine's the best way to go. Okay, the only thing I forgot to cover was the nails. Usually you, you go up in this area somewhere and you put one, two, one, two, one, two nails. But really on the first course you could only, you get by with just putting one. Because when you put the next one in, it's going to go through both of them. So you put two in this one. And all you really, all you need is two. Although I have, in a lot of cases, just used one nail and it works fine.
All right, you can see I spent the last maybe 15 minutes pulling the debris out and working its way down here. You can see the big pile I got down here now, the debris. As I was working my way down, my shingles will move. You can see this one right here, barely got a inch and a quarter. See how it kind of shifted over. I can use this to kind of reposition the shingles. And then as I was pulling on this one, you can see there's a hole that went right through the shingle. Now you might not notice that if you're pressure washing. So what I'm going to do is take this shingle right here. It's a thin end and I'm just going to Slip it underneath there. And that'll be good for who knows how long. Now as I'm working way down, I also noticed that this one fell apart. So I have a short shingle here. I'm just going to slip it under here. It's only about 14 inches long, but it'll last a long time there and take care of that problem. So you just have a few shingles laying around and you can do some patchwork on the bad spots. This one right here, a narrow shingle that covers this crack. It's kind of pushing the limits there. Only about one inch on each side of the crack, but it'll be all right. Sometimes you can turn this thing sideways and get underneath these shingles too if you want to be a little more cleaning there, I mean, a little more efficient. Anyway, and also the moss builds up on the end. You can just drag this right across the ends of these and break all that moss free. It'll pull down with the rest of the roof. I can see this one, I'm not too worried about that yet. When it gets up here about that far, maybe I'll slip a shingle under. You can see here where a squirrel bored a hole through the roof to get in the attic. I just stuck a piece of sheet metal under it. That was probably 10 years ago and never got around to putting a real shingle under it. But the metal works fine. So you're just looking for things that have gone wrong and fixing them as you go. And all this will wash down into the gutters. So I'm not too worried about it, but if you want to get rid of a lot of it, you can just pound on the roof like this as you're working your way down. And this stuff will work its way down and you can get more debris out ultimately. But I usually don't bother with that so much. The main thing is just get, get the crud out of here because that's where it, it builds up rots and then it starts rotting your shingles. That's it for the regular roof. Now I'm going to take you over and show you what I do about my skylights. Like you see there's a dam there and I've put another piece of sheet metal underneath that to keep that window from leaking. The other ones have never leaked but that debris builds up on the top side of the of the skylight and uh, over on the house I'm going to take you over there and show you what I did to fix that. Alright, to walk around on a cedar shake roof I recommend you use a rope tied onto something draped over the house and a harness and these. You can buy these things usually at a place that sells roofing materials. They're sandal corks. And you can walk around on a wet cedar shake roof with these things, no problem. They just strap right over the tops of your tennis shoes or whatever you got. Highly recommend it. This roof was put on in 1978. These are hand split shakes. I got this 2x2 two two primitive skylight. It had a, a dam up at the top that collected debris. and. It started leaking. You see how the glass slipped. But it wasn't the glass that was causing the leak. It was 
the metal flashing up there with all that debris was seeping in somewhere so I just put on those cork sandals and climbed up there one day and I used a rope on the other side to hang on to catch myself and keep my balance but I just shoved a bunch of shingles underneath the existing roof and covered that. Ended up doing that on the other skylight windows too just so the debris couldn't build up anymore on top of that thing. You can see this roof here it was put up in around 1980 and uh, it's due for the usual cleaning When I'm working on a roof, pulling the debris out of the shingles or whatever the case may be, uh, when you have a deck like this, you don't want to use trust the feet of the ladder. You know, they can it might stick, but it might not. And if it slides out, you're in trouble. So what I did is I made up these brackets, hold this piece of wood, and I just hook. I hook just a piece of angle iron with, and it hooks on the, uh, the the joist that's running this way it catches on it I don't have the full extension on there right now but imagine the extension running all the way up to that skylight and in order to support it I use that same gadget down here and depending on which way you're joists are running underneath your deck you might have to build a slightly different brackets metal brackets to hold it because the joists are running this direction then you have to wedge between these instead anyway just something you can do a lot safer okay I got the ladder hooked up so I can start doing this rough so I tied a rope to the building, back to the ladder, keep, keep that in from sliding out. It's locked in there pretty good in the dirt, but just in case, better safe than sorry. You don't want to come sliding backwards down the, the roof or have it shift on you while you're up there and throw your balance off. Here's a cl classic example. The hole goes right directly into the attic. There's no... Um, tar paper on this roof underneath and it skips sheathing so um, water can just get right through. This roof has been on here since 1981. It's all hand split and with no, it, like I say, it doesn't have a solid plywood base underneath it. It's just uh, back when you're on the inside of the looking out you can see daylight all through these but it never has leaked as long as I keep up with holes like that. So I'm just going to take a short shingle and slip it underneath here. That's all you got to do. Take care of that problem. When you're walking on the roof you don't want to step on those types of shingles because there's no nail holding them. But it's only an 18 inch long shingle. That's because I don't have to worry about you know, the crack up here. The crack's far enough over where it's not going to be a problem. I could put a nail in it but I found that they stay in there pretty good even with snow they usually don't come out but if they do I just put them back in the following year. Well one last thing is this is the shake roof that I was just working on. You skip sheathing on the inside. I had to put mesh up there to keep the bats and the mice and the squirrels out some spots you can see daylight through but it's never leaked and uh, as far as longevity they say you know they get all this air circulation that will last longer I haven't really seen that and I'll show you why this roof was put on in 1978 or 9 I forget which you see it's got half inch plywood sheathing and then there's the uh, the 18 pound felt 18 inch long between the shingles and this roof even though it's 
a couple of years older than the one I was showing you on my workshop over there. It's in just good a shape, if not better, than the, the shop that gets all that air circulation from skip sheathing. And this, this whole roof here was skip sheathed too in 1981 or two. And it doesn't look any worse for wear for that with the tar paper. Now the workshop had no tar paper, just skip sheathing. This is skip sheathing with the tar paper. And this is with the uh, half inch plywood sheathing. So it's solid, no air circulation underneath at all. And they're in pretty good shape for 40 years.